Credit unions began in 1844 in Rochdale, England with a coalition of weavers. No, I said weavers! They established the principles that run credit unions today. Five years later, this German guy, Franz Hermann Schultz de Litsch... No, you need more of a noise. Okay. De Litsch... No! De Litsch... Better. Uh, we'll just call him Franz. Anyway, he decided to further the idea and create a credit society to help shopkeepers find relief from loan sharks. I believed that by working together as cooperatives, the classes could attain economic freedom. A few years down the road, after an agricultural crisis in 1846 and 1847, this fellow named Friedrich Rafeson realized that people needed credit more than anything. So I used my own fortune to bring a system of rural credit cooperatives that's based on the principles of mutual support and self-governance. Then, in 1901, BAM! The first credit union lands in North America in Levis, Quebec, Canada, organized by a French-Canadian, Alphonse Desjardins. Ha ha ha! Eh? Ten years later, Desjardins immigrated to Manchester, New Hampshire, and founded the first U.S. credit union. Then, these two cats, Edward A. Feline, That's Filene! <laughs> sorry, Filene, and Roy Bergengren decided the credit union movement was growing so rapidly that it would soon need national recognition. So, Claude Orchard, who would later become the leader of federal credit union supervision, suggested that they meet in Estes Park with delegates from each state to establish an organization that would support the credit union movement. This resulted in the creation of the Credit Union National Extension Bureau, and after a few late-night meetings, the retooling of verses to popular songs. Hit it! C-U-N-E-B, it's C-U-N-E-B. Uh-huh. Most of the ideas for the Credit Union National Extension Bureau came from a trip to India where Filene witnessed a useful system of agricultural cooperatives. Who knew that credit unions were based on corn? Then, in 1934, good old Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed the Federal Credit Union Act into law and created the Credit Union National Association to provide insurance, auditing, and supplies to credit unions. Wait, doesn't that mean that credit unions fared well during the last recession too? Yep, kind of reassuring, isn't it? So, over the next 60 years, a few other exciting things happened. The NCUA was created, protecting your assets up to $250,000. The World Council of Credit Unions, or WOKU, was created to help maintain unity and progress of the worldwide credit union movement. And around the 1980s, credit unions were deregulated, meaning that they could now offer checking accounts and IRAs. In 1998, Clinton... Uh, no, Bill, signed the Credit Union Membership Act, also known as H.R. 1151, that, among other things, enabled credit unions to add members outside of their original core group, as long as it was less than 3,000 people. I'm always thinking about the little guy. And there you have it. That pretty much brings us up to today, where you use your local credit union because, let's face it, they're awesome. 